All right, next video with respect to doing a two sample scenario. So in 2009, McDonald's average service time at 596 randomly selected drive through restaurant visits um, was 174.22 seconds with a standard deviation of 16.49 seconds. In 2010, the service time for 750 randomized visits was 158. So you can see it's definitely less time, which is great. Um, so what I, and standard deviation of 17.06. All right, we're asked to estimate the average improvement for each drive-through visit for all visits between 09 and 2010 with 98% confidence. So what we're asked to do here is actually to construct a confidence interval for the difference of improvement. So here is our information for 2009. We have an N1 of 596. That was the total sample size from that first year. And then 2010, 750. And we're doing a confidence interval. So just like we do with uh, tests, confidence intervals, same thing. Um, both were randomly selected. There's no E at the end of both. Both were randomly selected okay um, I one year results one year's results do not impact another or influence And remember, when we're doing two samples, we've got to talk about both types of independence. So one is that one doesn't influence the other. And um, over 5,960 uh, visits in 2009, comma, over 7,500 drive-through visits in 2010. Therefore, independent N both sample sizes are at least 30. Therefore, difference in means sampling distribution is approximately normal sigma is not known use two sample T interval. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my T, two sample T interval thing on my graphing calculator and I'm going to actually come back to the formula in a minute because I want to get to this right away. So in your graphing calculator stat tests down to two sample t interval. For me, it's number zero. I don't know if you can see that, zero. Two sample t interval. And it asks us to enter information in, and it's basically all of this information over there on the left-hand side. So let's go like that. It is entering all of this information. into our graphing calculator. My recommendation slash desire slash you really need to be doing this folks is get your graphing calculator out, hit pause, zoom in if you have to into that data and that information there and you know all that stuff up there I want you to write it all down in your dry sorry put it all into your graphing calculator to do this alongside of me. So I entered my stuff for X1 and S1 and N1 and things like that um, with a confidence interval 
<laughs> I am doing 2009 as my X bar one, and my X bar two is obviously my second one. So when I'm doing this, I am expecting, I'm hoping to see, expecting, hoping, uh, for positive numbers in my interval because that would mean that there was a decrease in time which is an overall improvement. A decrease in time equals improvement. If you are taking less time with all your people in the drive-through that's a good thing. So I would really want my X bar 1 minus X bar 2 to, to uh, do that. So anyways, enter all the stuff in. Confidence level is 98% that I'm using. Pooled. It asks for pooled. And I always want to choose no. Okay? It's not pooled. And then I'm going to calculate. And my two numbers, it's thinking, it's thinking. It takes a little bit longer to think. And it gives me this interval. Thirteen point three one, comma seventeen point five nine. Other information it gives me, it gives me a DF. Of check this out. This is crazy. One thousand two hundred ninety three point nine seven. There is a ginormous degrees of freedom formula for doing two sample t tests that we're not going to learn. So it's okay that you got this ginormous DF. Don't worry. Okay. Then I'm going to interpret. I am 98% confident. The difference from 2009 to 2010 is somewhere between 13.31 and 17.59 second seconds improvement all right it's an improvement because the difference between the two is a positive number all right, my 2009 was a higher number than my 2010, so I'm expecting my average difference or my difference on average um, to be somewhere between 13.31 and 17.59 seconds. All right, you need to be really thinking when you're doing this, that's a decimal point. Uh, you need to be really thinking as you're doing this, what does it mean to be an improvement? That's what it means. Now, the actual formula, and I'll take it from your formula card, is statistic, plus or minus critical value times standard deviation of statistic. So my statistic in this case is x bar 1 minus x bar 2, because it's the difference in the two. Uh, people ask, are we going to add them? Uh, typically the answer is no. When we're doing a two sample test or two sample confidence interval, we're looking for the difference in the two, not the sum of the two. All right. Plus or minus. T. So T for degrees of freedom. Now, our T table, T table right there. All right. It, uh, I'm looking for 98% confident. And I'm looking for 1,000. What was that degrees of freedom? It was like a crazy big number. It was 1,000. 293. All right, point something. It doesn't really matter. Look at your T table. The largest DF is infinity. We're not there yet. The next one is a thousand. And that's under the 1000s, 296 that I have. So I'm going to use that number as 2.33. All right, that's close enough for what we're doing times 
standard deviation of statistic times, and now this is again from your formula card. Oops, get on the right page. From your formula card, right down here for two samples, and it gives me the gives me the uh, um, value right here. But I don't know sigma, so I have to replace that with s. So I'm going to have square root of, it's another big square root, and I will have s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2. And all of those numbers then get plugged in to give me what that original, you know, is what was my interval, 13.31 up to 17 point, oh, it just went blank on me, 5.9. All right, for the reflection response, um, what I want you to do is think, or even try, um, what would happen if I did it the other way around? What if I did 2010 minus 2009? So what if I thought of this as a hypothesis test? And I did my alternative and said, my average of 2010 is less than my average of 2009. Use the same data. Do a hypothesis test for the means with the same data that you just did, so it should still be in your calculator. Um, so it's going to be a two-sample t-test. Um, but do it like this, with 2010 less than 2009, because that would be an improvement if my average of 20, 000, 2010 is less than my average of 2009. That's, I mean, that would be an improvement if the average time at a drive through is decreasing. All right, I want you to do a hypothesis test for that. You don't have to, like, do it all. I'm just saying just in your calculator. Just grab your calculator, stat test, find two sample t test, run it through with this. Tell me what your t-score is and your p-value is in the reflection response. Two things, t-score, p-value, and don't think you're cheating and thinking ahead and thinking like, oh, there's the t-score. No, 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 there are two different numbers. I've said that before. This is a critical value for 98% confidence. I want you to find the p-value and the t-score for a t-test. Two different things. Do that, and I'll see you in class.